In this video, I'm going to show you one of my favorite passing concepts out of the gun type formation in Madden 23. It's really the cornerstone concept of Madden 23. Every year, there's a cornerstone concept. And what do I mean when I say cornerstone concept? I simply mean most effective concept, the, the, the foundational concept you have to be able to understand in order to be an effective Madden player in this season's game. And it's the slant post concept. Now, we're going to get deep into this. I'm going to explain why Clef the God um, runs this to perfection literally perfection um, in his in his offense. So, uh, guys, make sure that if you want to get my entire D Detroit tight offensive ebook, make sure that you join the Patreon. It's only 10 bucks to become a member. Gets you access to all of our Madden 23 offensive and defensive ebooks. But let's go ahead and get into this, guys. We're going to show you how to run the slant post concept. It's going to be kind of a deep video. And uh, I want to explain this in depth because this is the number one play in Madden 23. Number one play in Madden 23. Um, it's been one of the best plays every year, but this year it is what I call the cornerstone concept uh, of the game. Now you can actually run this a couple different ways. You can use uh, Hot Route Master to run this. And I'm going to show you two key plays from tight that you want to be utilizing if you're going to run this. The first one is slot post. Um, I believe this is one of the best versions of this. And then the second one is going to be kind of a hot route master setup out of PA slot cross. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do just for, for simplicity, I'm running Brunel on court as quarterback. If you run a play action play, uh, I really recommend these are both stock quick audibles as well, uh, in the Detroit tight. Uh, but we'll just come out and slot post and show first. I really recommend if you're running a left-handed quarterback, make sure the running back is on your left-hand side. If you're running a right-handed quarterback, make sure your running back is on your right-hand side. Okay? Now, why is this so good? It's so good because it really does a great job of attacking the user in the middle of the field. Now, most people, the way they want to play defense, they either want to play man coverage Let's start with man. They either want to play man coverage or they want to play zone drops. I'm going to explain zone drops in a second, but let's talk about man coverage. So man coverage, if you look at this play, why is it good? Well, the general principle of man coverage, whenever you're trying to attack it offensively, is you want to run against man and you want to sit against zone, ideally. So what we're trying to do is get the crisscross action so that our our defend, our, our uh, receivers have the most amount of space to be able to run free. Okay, that's that's the idea. All right. So what we're going to do is, and you can run this in a variety of different ways too. By the way, which we're going to get into that in a little bit. But we're just going to slant Daniels, and then what I like to do is streak CD Lamb. That's going to clear out space so that this post can be thrown in in the middle but can also be thrown out the out at the outside, all right? And then what I like to do here, you can kind of do it however you want to do it. Um, the, the This two-man game, whatever you want to do. So, like, if you want to add the, the the wheel and the ag streak, you can do that. If you want to flat the, the receiver, you can do that. The main cornerstone concept is really these, these two receivers in the middle of the field. And how we can manipulate. So what you're going to see here is against man coverage, both receivers are going to win. Both receivers are going to win against man coverage. So now what this does, just for the fact alone that both receivers win against man coverage, let me just ask you, which route are you going to want to use? Well, generally, you're going to want to use her the post. So I'm going to pretend like the safety of my user. I'm going to use her the post. Now, how are you going to defend the slant route? Well, there's really only one way to do it, and that's put like a curl flat here and then maybe like a, a hook curl, okay? So kind of getting really adjusty. And I want you to watch this slant and why this, this is so good. You see here, I can throw it before it gets to the curl flat, okay? Whether it's a slant, whether it's a drag, whether it's an in, it doesn't really matter. I can throw the ball before it gets to the zones, and this, this is the main reason why this is the best concept in the game. So um, here we'll do it a little bit better. So what we'll do is we'll bring the safety down, and we'll put him in a purple. This is a drop eight coverage. Most people are not going to drop nine. Most people at the most are going to drop eight this year because of the way sheds work. Most people won't drop eight. Most people are sending, sending five every play, so that means they're dropping six, which is there's only so many coverage combinations you can do. Uh, but anyway, so my user is going to take the post drop. And we'll slant, streak, and then we have the, the wheel and the flat. Okay? As soon as I see they go to the post, 
my eyes are going right there and I could fit that in that zone as you can see. This is why this play is so powerful. It doesn't matter what zone they put. The zone can only guard the route for a little bit and then the route will run itself open. Um, that's the idea, okay? Now, um, let's talk about how, the, how this play works against an all-out zone defense. So let's say they play, they just play like standard zone coverage, okay? Um, this is just a basic cover four drop. A lot of things are gonna be open in this, um, but we'll keep it simple here for you guys. What I like to tell people when you're reading this concept, I think this is super helpful for actually reading it effectively. Um, I've been kind of trying to train myself how to read this right every time. The best way to do it is to stare, almost stare at the top point of that post route on the left side there where it's going to cut inside. If you stare that down, then your slant comes into the window and you see how I could throw that. They have a yellow zone and they have a, a curl flat zone and they can't guard it. They can't guard it because the route runs itself into so many different um, spaces on the field. And that's why I think it's so good. Uh, here we're going to do something. I'm going to throw a hook curl. We got a vertical hook. We got a cloud flat. And for good measure, we're going to have a curl flat. So we have five zones de devoted to guarding the slant. I'm not, I don't even think it's going to guard it, even if you do that, especially when you pair it with some type of flat route to pull the zones out. Um, but what, we'll see. Let's see if we can throw it right. Right there, and I, I, I could probably have thrown that a little bit uh, earlier, and I probably would have been able to hit it. Like, this this route is that powerful, okay? So the other reason why this is such a good play, though, is the fact that the user has to, has to guard the post. If the user doesn't guard the post, if he even for a second, especially this year, if he for a second takes his eyes off the post route, then, so as I'm reading this, I'm going to look at that top point of that post. If I see space over there, I'm going to be looking at the slant. If I don't see space over there, let's say the user runs over there or something, then now my eyes are going to progress to the post. And if you watch here, mid-read matched it, but you see like it gets it gets it gets open still. Like there's still a small window where you can hit it. Now most people aren't going to have a mid-read for a lot of different reasons. In fact, um, in, in tight specifically, they will play corner out so much better if you don't have a mid read on the field, okay? So a lot of times you're gonna get, this is the user, okay? Uh, generally speaking. So anyway, if we come back to this core concept, you'll see here, okay, the user goes left. Now I can throw this somewhere over in that pocket, over in there, okay? So now let's uh, let's talk about how you can create this, how, how you can create different variations of this. So PA slot cross. Uh, PA slot cross has a really unique crossing route to the X receiver. So if I just post Michael Irvin, I'm in the same basic concept. Okay, if I have Hot Master. And what you'll notice is that though this post comes at a different depth. If you look at it right there, that post cuts. And if we just take if we just take the simple uh, look here, if you watch this post route that Michael Irvin's on, watch where he's going to end up. He ends up around the opposite thirty yard line. This is a twenty yard difference. If you watch this hot route master post, watch where he ends up, right on the edge of the fifty. So it's a twenty yard route differential depending on what post you're running. Now, same theory. Let's apply it to a slant. So I'm going to slant Daniels. I want you to watch. So he's going to start his route on the 30, and his slant, when we throw it all the way over here, is going to be about 15 yards, roughly, give or take, about 15 yards. If I drag him or I put him on this shallow crosser, then you're going to notice that this route runs 10 yards down the field. Now let's take that a little bit further, and let's say that we put him on a drag. What you'll notice that when we put him on a drag is now he's on the 30, his route is going to run about five yards. So three different points at which the route intersects and the route ends up. Why is this significant? It's significant because of what I'm about to show you. When your opponent starts to double flat their zones, you really have won the game. Um, because it's at this point almost impossible to stop you. It's literally almost impossible. So what do I mean when I say double flat? I just mean they're going to have a low flat defender, they're going to have a high flat defender, and they're going to have somebody over the top. Same thing over here generally. This is designed to stop deep flood combos that a lot of people like to go to. 
Again, just this is just for a visual cue. But if you look here now, now where's all the space at? All the space is in the middle of the field, right? Kind of. Um, but that's where their user is. And if they're playing good defense, they may even drop eight. Okay? So they have two zones in the middle of the field plus their user. Or one zone in the middle of the field plus the user. So if you watch this play, and again, we'll just run it real simple with a slant. I want you to watch. So that five-yard curl flat defender, look who he's not guarding. He can't guard that slant. So I can throw that in that little window right over there. Okay? Now, saves a little time. We're just going to look at instant replay here. But if you watch, watch this post route. This is where it's interesting. So if I throw this, so that's 30-yard cloud. Look where he, he can kind of guard it over there. But again, the user has to carry him to that zone because there's nobody in the middle of the field. So if the user takes this slant here, let's say the user is over here, then I can throw this over here in this other hash mark area. So the beauty of this play is it literally attacks the entire field in one, in one setup, and you can run it at different depths. So let's say now, um, you know, we know they're, they're double flatting, right? So when we know they're double flatting, what can we do? Well, we can, we can run a route that's not 30 yards deep. We can run a route that's not 30 yards deep. So now we're going to run this post. And you see that we can, he still kind of guarded it, but you also have that tight end. The tight end is still open over there. Now, if you really wanted to get streamlined with this, another little piece on this that's, I think, really valuable is, remember, they're putting their zones at five. What I what you can also do here is you can put the tight or put your put your over route at a smart as a smart routed in. And watch this. I can throw that in a real nice pocket over in that area. Okay? So that's why slam post so good. It beats man coverage well, but it also does such a good job at attacking man coverage, so it beats the meta. But you can tailor this clay. Like, you'll see Clef run routes like this. And this double slant concept. Like, because they just go to different points on the field, and they make it hard for the zone covers to be able to, to do anything. So, anyways, um, this is why Slant Post is so good. And it's really the cornerstone concept of Madden 23. We're going to be talking about some other plays as well. If you want to get my entire ebook on the tight offense, make sure you join the Patreon. Ten bucks gets you access to everything over there. All ebooks, all updates, everything for just ten bucks. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you over at the Patreon page.